Entertainment News and uh, super excited about my first guest. He is a New England based singer, songwriter, amazing musician, uh, super talented, has had such a great career, has a new album out right now, and i um, really excited to talk to Matt Cuson. Hey, Matt. Hi, Matt. Hi, how's it going? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. You forgot to mention it's gloomy, but it's like 400 degrees, at least down oh. here in New York. It is. Yeah, it's like gloomy, like humid, all the Sticky, great things. smelly, gross, all those adjectives. Oh, right, all the things you want out of your summer. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, so thank you so much for being on the show. You have done so many awesome things. You've collaborated and worked with so many amazing artists like Brian McKnight, Livingston Taylor, James Taylor, Stevie Wonder, Megan Hilty, you've been on pretty much every major talk show playing either behind some other, you know, amazing musician or as, you know, yourself. Um, you have a new album out called Only Human, uh, just released a couple months ago, and you're touring, doing some shows. So talk to us about your album. What can we hear on this new record? Honestly, you can hear everything um the album is called only human because of a lot of reasons one because it took me a very long time to put it out um like you said i've been touring and doing a bunch of stuff in the meantime so it kind of keeps you keeps you busy and, and away from the studio a lot um so i finally over the last couple of years just just uh you know like a like a student studies for a, a big test the night before i just crammed completely and it's a just a, com a compilation of, of 14 tunes that are all very different um, but that I've been singing for five years, at least some of them are even older than that. And, uh, that crowds have liked, or that's, you know, my wife said, if you don't put that on, I'm divorcing you. <laughs> uh, and that's kind of, that's kind of the compilation. It's, it's just, uh, it's old tunes all smashed together and it does come together because it's still got my kind of feel to every song, even though they're all different styles, but lyrically it's, it's you know, about just being only human and making mistakes and falling in love and how, how the heck can she love me and, <laughs> and dark times and cliche times and all that, all that good stuff. All the things that we want to hear. I mean, that's, that's real oh. life. That's why we love great songs. Um, I did want to right. talk about, you know, you are a songwriter, I think, first and foremost. You, you're an award-winning songwriter. You've won the John Lennon, John Lennon Songwriting Competition more than once. Billboard uh, songwriting competition, and you've written for other artists. Um, I have a couple of questions about this. First, how do you stay inspired as a writer? And also, um, how do you kind of run the gamut between writing for other artists versus writing yourself? Is that process different, or is it all kind of the same? Very different. Um, it, it really depends on who, who it is, but when, when with my own songs, they're so honest and personal that oh, a lot. Sometimes people can't relate, but I, I tend to to let it all go when it's my own stuff. When I'm writing for somebody else, I want to know what they want, uh, what their aim for the song is. If it's just a pop song, if they want, you know, the genre of song. There, there's so much goes into it, and I always try to get as much from that artist as I possibly can. But um. Oh, I forgot what your first question was, because I tend to go on and on and on. <laughs> well, I asked two at the same time, which is probably not the best. Well, I just wanted to know what, what keeps you inspired from a, from a writing oh, point of view. I, I'm the kind of guy that always, I'll never be satisfied with my career. I'll never be satisfied with, like, there's always going to be something more. There's always stuff to learn, no matter how unbelievable you are. Uh, some of the, the greatest musicians that I learned from they say the same thing that they could have gone you know more and more and done more and more and i think you know when you decided you're good enough is the day your career kind of dies or your your passion dies at least that's what i think and i, and I there's so much to do like the on the album i have so many different styles of classical jazz soul r&b pop bluegrass and i want to do all of that over and over and over again and then expand into different you know different genres and different I'm getting a lot of, big into arranging and producing. That's mm -hmm. been one of my biggest um, things over the past year or two is, is not only myself but other artists. It's been awesome and I just want to keep, keep going. Did you produce and arrange this album yourself or did you collaborate with some people? I produced and arranged it myself. Uh, there's a couple co-writes, Shoshana Bean, the wonderful Shoshana Bean mm -hmm. co-wrote a tune with me. Um, but most of it is just, you know, on my dime, in my bedroom, in my studio or, you know, 
whatever I could make happen, uh, I, that's how it kind of all came together. I love that you kind of you did this on your own, like you said, in your room, in your home studio, and yet you did a 14-track full-length album yeah. in the day and age of everyone just puts out an EP. Was right. there, a, was there a, a, a reason behind you wanted to make a full-length album as opposed to kind of releasing these in little chunks? Just a decision. Yeah, well, a lot of people in the industry gave me advice. you got to split this up into two EPs. Nobody yeah. can handle 14 <laughs> songs. And it's very true. But, you know, as a creative dude, I'm constantly writing and constantly producing. And I have 30, 40 tunes ready to go for the next album or, you know, five-song EP or whatever. I want to do a couple Christmas songs this year to add on to the few I've done a few years back. And these were also 14 tunes that I personally needed to get out of my life. If that, mm -hmm. that sounds terrible. But <laughs> I've sung them for so long, I've been recording them nonstop, and, and you know, I, even though I did most of it in my home studio, uh, you know, all over the world there was musicians from, all the horns were in Atlanta, all the strings mm -hmm. were in Pittsburgh and LA, all the drums were in Boston and New York, so it, it came from all over. I needed to get these songs done and out, and if people can't you know, listen to 14 songs and stomach them all, then listen to two now and two next week. Yeah, I mean, I feel like in this day and age, people, a lot less people are going out and buying a physical, you know, CD or something that you have to play from beginning to end. I mean, I'm sure you right. can just go on YouTube, I mean, uh, uh, iTunes and purchase the few songs that kind of stand out to you the most, and there's options. I don't right. think that you should be sort of held back by that. You know? Exactly. Do you don't think that. Where we used to go out <laughs> and buy the CD and open and look at the liner notes yeah. and who played what. I, I miss those days. And this is, you know, I'm a pretty old soul, I guess. And, and, <laughs> and I, I didn't want to, I'm not ready to convert. I, now I am, but I wasn't ready to convert into the EP streaming thing yet. But I think uh, the next album, as, as per everybody's trying to make me do, will be a five song EP. <laughs> Just to make everybody happy. Get the old people, the young people, get everybody going. <laughs> it is like the EP is the new album, I feel, in this singles. day and age. Or yeah. singles, yeah. I mean, putting out one song yeah. at a time, putting out a video right. on YouTube, you know, getting some yeah. plays and hits. Kind of anything yeah, goes. Short attention span. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So for your songwriting process, do you typically like to kind of work on a song play it out on some gigs, kind of see what the reaction is like, or are, are you comfortable with just sitting in a studio, writing a tune, and then recording it? Do you have a preference? I don't. Honestly, every single tune, especially on this record, has been written differently. Uh, there's a song called Leaving L.A. on about Leaving L.A. We, we, we can kind of I know. It makes me like Those happy and sad at the same time. I love it. <laughs> uh, that song literally took me an hour to write, wow. and we started recording it. A week later, maybe we got in the studio and just did like all the rhythm tracks and everything. But uh, there's other songs that have taken me years and years and years. I, I tend to go back to my first record. There's a song called One of Those Nights, which won the John Lennon Award that you talked about earlier. That song took me four years, three, four years to finish. I left it alone and I would come back, write the bridge, and then I would leave it alone again, come back, rewrite some of the lyrics. So everything is different. And everybody was asking, is it lyrics first or music first? I wish I had a concrete answer. It's literally, you never know where inspiration, I always say that inspiration starts the song and hard work finishes the song. True. Hard work and technique. I mean, you know, Absolutely. musicians, you know, you went to Berklee College of Music, <laughs> you got your education in this. So yeah, you can only sort of live off of that inspiration for so long and then you have to right. make it work. Music right. Back then I used to have tons and tons of, you know, 60 second songs or a verse and a chorus and then I was like, yeah, I'm done. It'll come to me. It'll come to me. It never did. So yeah. it's uh, that hard work and technique part is, is huge. So you mentioned earlier that, you know, you're a happily married guy. Did you ever feel like, oh great, I'm married now. I'm happy. I'm in love. No more breakup songs. No more like unrequited oh. love. Like where's that inspiration going to come from? Oh no. Oh, <laughs> I know. I, well, a lot of these songs are written for her too, but they're more... It's so hard to sit and write a love song for your wife. Like, it's, just, it's almost impossible, especially for it to be so touching and beautiful. So the couple that I've done for her, there's a song called Next to You, which is a more comical, this perfect woman married this lowly musician 
type blues song. Uh, <laughs> and then I got, uh, she was born and raised in LA. I got a song called So Long So Soon, which is a story of her leaving her family to come here. So I write songs like that. Man, to just write an I Love You song, is so hard because it'll never be right. I mean, you probably shouldn't, I probably shouldn't, you know, base it all on just writing one perfect song. And that's why I'm kind of writing a million of them. Yeah. But uh, the breakup songs, I can always go out. I got a million crazy friends that I can pull inspiration <laughs> from. And, kind of live vicariously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, there, there's, there's always going to be stories uh, to, to pull inspiration. But I feel like I could write a song about this chair I'm sitting in if you ask me to. Amazing. That's a real songwriter right there. Uh, yes, it might be terrible. No, I would write, if I had to write a song, I would write about, you know, sitting with my husband and having a glass of wine and watching Shark Tank. Cause that's, that's right. Because that's what we do. Yeah. That's my love song. I love the specifics. I love, I love <laughs> the, the personal element to it. Let's write it. There you go. Let's do it. it. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, when you were putting this um, album together, were there any songs that you were like, this song is so personal i'm almost afraid to put it out there or have you ever felt that way in in a songwriting situation where you're like people are going to know something about me now because i opened myself up and i'm and now they're going to know this yeah absolutely uh this album all right we're about to we're about to get real close here okay this album deals with so much stuff beyond the songs i wrote for my wife and and the, and, and other stuff this song or this album deals with the cliche artist dark period that I went through a few years back, not nah, longer than a few years back, but uh, it deals with alcoholism, it deals with all sorts of stuff, uh, and, and hopes to get over all of that. And there's a song in the album called Who Like Me that I wrote when I was actually in a mental home about 10 years ago. And I don't know how deep this show gets, but uh, <laughs> we, <laughs> so, yeah, we can I, go there. We're going there, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a song I wrote, and a couple of my close friends who were in the business. It's like, man, that song is, is, is good, but you might want to be careful with that one. I mean, it's nothing terrible. It's, it's getting in and finally finding out how to get over it. And uh, then, I, but, but towards the end of the album, there was going to be, you know, that 13 songs on the record. Towards, towards the end, I, I, a bunch of people just said, you've got to put that song on. Plus, I wrote it. That's the, when I say I wrote songs a long time, that I started writing 10 years ago. Wow. And I, uh, so yeah, it's it's that one was tough. The one I won the Lennon Award for my first album was tough, but I was with the record label then, and they were like, "No, that song's going on," and it ended up being huge. So there, there I, I have a plus. I have a pocket full of personal songs that you may never, you may hear, but people will never hear. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel like with most artists, those really raw moments are usually the ones that connect with people the most, and they're probably the scariest. But those are the ones that you know some person sitting in their room somewhere is like wow that's how i feel and that's what i've learned yeah that's what i've learned and i've actually got I, I get emails every now and then um yeah thank you for that song that song got me through a tough time that song got me through a breakdown yeah. i got an uh, email from a soldier in iraq about three months ago who said i never go to sleep without listening to and he named like five or six tunes of mine and i'm like <laughs> Like, that's why you do it. Wow. So why hold that? You know, just put it out there. I'm not ashamed of any of it. So I have no problem sharing, especially if it's going to inspire somebody. Absolutely. That's amazing. Uh, so Only Human, I'm going to play a little snippet because I was very uh, upset that you're, you're in New York. You're I'm not so able to sorry. be in the studio to perform. <laughs> but I'll play a little snip of uh, the title track. Uh, where can people get this? iTunes, I imagine. Anywhere else? Yeah, it's, everywhere? It's, it's, iTunes everywhere. Uh, physical copies are on cdbaby.com for us old schoolers who yep. like the physical <laughs> ones. But the, all the streaming, all the everything, it's there. And I actually will say this: my first album just got pulled. Uh, the old one that we talked a little bit about, but that'll be up in the next couple of weeks, so you can have all the me you want. <laughs> Perfect. And you, your website, mattcuson.com. Um, yeah. Okay, quick little, just a chorus, just a, just a little taste, just a little something. Okay. okay. Are you gonna dance? I'm gonna dance. We got some dancers outside too. I wish I could turn the camera around. So good. I love the horns. Oh, we have fun time around the horns. It's so good. Um, did you do the horn arrangements? 
yourself? Did the horn arrangements. All these, uh, the horn guys were down in Atlanta. So a couple friends of mine, they played for everyone, and they were. I was lucky enough. They're on all the, um, all the horn tunes on the record. It's all them, and I arranged all of them. That's that's one of the things I want to be better at. So I'm trying to uh, do it all. So good. I love it. Uh, <laughs> so shows. Any shows here in the New England area coming up? Are you performing with any other artists? Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm actually mad. I just did one in Boston. I did a CD release in Boston. If I knew you were here, I would have told you. But uh, <laughs> I'm playing um, uh, Ware, Massachusetts, in the center of Massachusetts tomorrow. It's about uh, 20 minutes from Springfield, 30 minutes from Hartford. Uh, tomorrow night in Ware, Massachusetts, at Workshop 13. I'm playing in New York City next Friday, a solo strip down so I can tell some of these stories uh, at Rockwood uh, next uh, on the 21st of July. Yes, MacHughes.com has all this stuff. Uh, there's there's a ton of shows coming up. I'm going to Europe three times in the fall. Amazing. And busy. Yeah. Yeah. You sound like a busy guy. <laughs> I'm trying. Thank you so much for coming on the show today, Matt. Um, once again, the new album is called Only Human. You can get it everywhere. MattCuson.com. And um, stick around. We're going to take a really quick little uh, pause as I get ready for my next guest. And uh, thank you again, Matt. Ava, you're awesome. Thank you so very much for having me. <laughs>